I've recently gotten into journaling and it's made a huge difference in my life. And because I have a Cricut and I'm a content creator, I can never find pre-made sticker sets that suit exactly what I want to do with my journal. My handwriting is awful and while I'm busy improving it, I want to be able to make pretty headings and titles for my journal. So I'm going to show you how I make my journaling stickers using my Cricut machine and Print Then Cut. My name is Kelly Rousseau and let's get clacking. So to first start off, there are many different types of materials that you can use for these journaling stickers. I use mostly label paper because it's very cheap and it's very thin, so it doesn't bulk up your journal too much. I also use a lot of clear sticker vinyl because I like to be able to see the background through the sticker sometimes. Of course, there are many different types of sticker vinyl that you can get. There's white printable vinyl that comes in both glossy and matte. There's clear, there's holographic, there's washi tape. There's so many different kinds of sticker vinyl that you can use. And honestly, many of them are gonna suit your needs very well, but I like to use just plain label paper and clear vinyl. I find that those two tend to cover all of the bases of what I need, so I don't actually really use anything else in my journal. When choosing a medium, make sure it says printable. That's the biggest part about making stickers with print and cut for your journal, is that if you're not using a medium that specifically states that it's printable, then you more than likely can't print on it. And if you can print on it, then it's more than likely luck and not the rule of thumb. So look out for printable on the cover or in the title, and then you know that you will be able to use it. While recording, I somehow completely forgot to talk about which Cricut machine I actually use to make my journaling stickers, which is kind of important information. But most of the time, I actually end up using my Explore 3. But you can actually use any of the Cricut machines that are currently on the market, except for the little Cricut Joy. The Joy doesn't have the sensor that the other machines do in order to be able to read the registration marks. So this little blue machine is the only one that won't work. The Joy Extra, which is a little bit wider and is white, will be able to use Print and Cut, which is pretty much why they designed that machine. And I'm ridiculously excited to at some point get my hands on one. They're not available in South Africa yet, so I'm just gonna have to wait. So if you have an Explore Air 2, an Explore 3, a Maker, a Maker 3, or the Venture, or the Cricut Joy Extra, then you will be able to make use of the Print and Cut feature, which is very exciting. Now next is the type of printer that you use. I use an Epson EcoTank L3150. It's no longer in production, but a similar model is an L3250. And in all honesty, most of those models are all very, very similar in features. So just check to see what the models can do that you're looking for. And I will leave some links in the description for you of similar models to the one that I have, but the ink tank printers, you can get Canon, you can get Brother. There are many different kinds. Those tend to be the most cost-effective when it comes to actually printing out your stickers and things like that. I've printed hundreds of pages and it's been 18 months since I bought my printer. I haven't had many problems, a few minor clogs that have been easy to sort out and my ink is still like half. So the ink really, really lasts a long time. So I would definitely suggest getting an ink tank printer over a cartridge one. When it comes to your cutting mat for your Cricut, I would recommend using either a blue light grip mat or a green standard grip mat, but a standard grip mat that is a little bit older, not a brand new one, because that may destroy your paper. <laughs> Those things are very sticky when they're brand new, so please be careful if you're using a new one. And then when it comes to resources, now I use Creative Fabrica a lot and I work with them quite a lot. So I'm very familiar with the website and what they offer. And you'll be able to find an affiliate link in the description for a subscription that works out to $5 a month. But I genuinely use my Creative Fabrica subscription all the time. I use it a lot for my journaling, not only for fonts for my titles and icons for my little stickers for my calendar, but I also use it to be able to print out full pages of kind of backgrounds is what I call them and I like to cut those up and tear them up and use them in designs and whatnot and I use those a lot and they have specials running all the time where you can renew for another year at less than five dollars a month so definitely check that out because I know that you'll love it. So even at the moment they have an exclusive memorial deal that you can see where it's $3.99 per month if you renew for a year and this video is not sponsored by them at all like I said I genuinely use them a lot and I like to take a look at the fonts that they have and I've got lots of fonts installed on my computer from them 
This font is a font that I absolutely love to use for all of my headings. So I will leave a link down to that one in the description as well. As I know many of you already have a subscription, so you can just easily download this one. So when you find a font that you like, all you need to do is click on download. And once you've downloaded it, you can open the file. And I would suggest installing the OTF files to your computer. Those tend to be the best ones. And you can just double click on it and click on install. And then when it comes to backgrounds and things like that, now, honestly, most of the time I tend to just pick a background because of the color theme. As an example, the most recent theme I had in my journal was black and white. So I would literally just type in black and whites. And it then comes up with thousands of different results that you can choose from. But I like to use the filter section so that I can find the ones that I'm actually looking for. So I just scroll down a little bit and click on patterns because I'm just looking for like plain things to be able to use in my background. And then I would download a few of these bundles and print out some of the full pages for whichever ones that kind of fit my journal theme or the theme that I thought that I wanted to use. Because many of these files actually come with several different images within them that you can choose from. And a lot of them work really, really well for just like a just adding a little bit of an interest element to your page. So I find that particularly useful for my journals. And this you don't have to use your Cricut for at all. You can literally just download it and print it out. If you wanted to change the pattern or play with the pattern a little bit, you would need to use another software like Silhouette Studio or Affinity Designer, Photoshop, you know, maybe even Canva. You can bring it into Canva and tile it for a full page. That's totally up to you. But it's really easy to be able to use these patterns because you can just drop and drag them into your software and there we go. You don't need to use your Cricut for this at all. Now, when it comes to using my Cricut for these kinds of titles and things like that, I'll just go into Cricut Design Space, type in my title that I want to add in. Like, let's say I want to have a content plan. So I'll type in content plan, click on it, and then I can change the font. So I can come up to the top left hand corner, click on font. And then I always go to the system tab because the first tab will be all the fonts available through Cricut Access, which is their monthly program that you can pay for. But I prefer to use my system fonts most of the time because those are the ones that I tend to like. And I'm going to type in Angelo to find the baby Angelo font. I'm going to click on it and it'll change the font in the background on my canvas to the baby Angelo one. So I'm going to zoom in so we can work with it a little bit closer. And what I like to do here is go to the beginning of the font of the word and put in those little squiggly line things. I know that it has a name. I have no idea what it is. And then I click end and I put one on the end as well. Now I'm going to change the color to black, but you can obviously make it whatever color you want. If you're doing a blue theme, you can make it blue. I just prefer to leave them black because then I can just reprint them every month. And then from here, we can click on the word and it might bug out and show you that it's selecting somewhere else like it does on mine. Let's not get into the Cricut bugs. <laughs> but now is where I like to offset. So I'm going to add an offset to my word and just make sure I'm going to pull it down a little bit so I can see the whole thing. Just make sure that you like how much of a border there is to your word. Now that one's quite a large border, so I want to reduce the size of the border quite a bit. Let's do one up, one down. There we go. And we're going to click apply. And obviously I don't want it to be gray, so I'm going to change the color again, like I did for changing the words to be black. I'm going to click on the little gray box and then click on the little white box. Now there is a little bit of a gap in the middle here, right in the middle of the sticker. I don't want that to be there. So I'm going to click on the offset then I'm going to click on contour and that allows me to remove that little section. So any line that is enclosed, you can remove and we can click on it and then we just click away and now it's gone. Now, the most important part about making stickers with your Cricut for your journaling is to be flattening them. You can't just send it to the Cricut like this because it will separate it into two different colors. You'll have a black layer and a white layer. You need to remember to flatten them. So we're going to select both and we're going to click flatten. 
You'll notice the outside line kind of disappears a little bit. Now we can't really see where our sticker is. I like to change the background color of my canvas so that I can more easily see the white because white on white obviously doesn't stand out. So I'm going to click on this little white block here next to blank canvas. And it doesn't really look like anything changes, but up at the top, you'll see a little hidden feature appears that says color. So I'm gonna click on that block and I'm gonna change it. I normally change it to this color. I don't know why my brain has picked this color, but I change it to this blue. Now we can more easily see our sticker and what it's going to look like. Now, the next step that I like to do is to change the size. Now, 15.23 centimeters is a little bit big for my sticker that I want it to be. I want it to be able to fit inside my journal. I'm gonna make it around 10 centimeters. I'm using a B5 journal, so it can be a little bit bigger than normal. Make sure that you've gotten the sizing correct for what you have in your journal or for the size of your journal as to what you want on the screen. And then you can pretty much just repeat those steps for any of the other stickers that you want to have. Freedness. Of course, my cat has to interrupt a video <laughs> every time. Kim. Come, my boy. He's going to come and jump up on my lap now. <laughs> hey, yo. And now that that interruption is over, we can continue fleshing out the rest of our page. I try to make it so that I don't have to keep redoing this all the time. So as an example, I will add in another word and I'll just type in Monday, reduce the size so that it is quite small and that it fits in my 0.5 slots. There we go. So I'll make it 0.5 in height, change the color. I'll zoom in so that I can see it a little bit better. And then I'll duplicate it by right clicking and duplicating. And then I'll change that to Tuesday. And then I'll duplicate it again and so on and so forth until I have all of the days of the week. And once I have them all, I will go back to the offset feature and I'll add my offset so that my offset is a very teeny tiny, normally around 0.1 or so. And then I'll click OK. And I'll do that for each of the words. And the reason why I don't do them all at the same time is because if you do, the offsets get welded to each other. And if the letter, the words are far away from each other and you remove weld offsets, then for some reason, it gives you one for each individual letter. So let's not ask Cricket why they do that. So we'll just do them one by one because it's either this or you have to weld each word individually one by one, which is very much of the same thing anyway. Then I'm going to select all of the offsets and I can do so by clicking on them in the layers panel and just holding shift on my keyboard. And once I'm sure that I've got them all, I'm going to change the color to white and then I'm going to flatten them. I also like to keep them separate so that I can move them around if I need to because sometimes I like to optimize the space on my page as much as possible and like I turn them sideways and move them and things like that. So I don't like to do them all at once. Now it comes time for the optimization like I mentioned. I like to move them close to each other but not touching. Leave a little bit of a space in between because if you make them overlap, then they will not cut properly. So try and keep them just a little bit away from each other. I'd rather lose a tiny little bit of space to the optimal placement as opposed to having two stickers stuck together. And that's kind of the most optimal use of my space. And then I'm going to attach them only because I want to make sure that they don't move when we go to the next stage. So I'm going to zoom out and take my two little elements and move them into the top left hand side of the screen. The reason why I do this is because when you have an element selected, you can't move it past the left hand side. You can move it past the right, but not the left. So when I'm optimizing the space on my page, that's one less border that I have to worry about, the left hand side and the top side. So I'll move this one to the top and then maybe even duplicate it so that I have more than one, maybe a few. <laughs> and then I'll do the same for my Monday to Sunday section. 
and then we select both of them we can right click and duplicate and then I can duplicate some more because I literally use these every week so I know that I'm going to need lots of them so I don't mind making lots of them. I also want to make sure that I have like fun little elements to add onto my page. Now I have lots of little stickers that I like to add, NBs, you know, ones for when I make a sale on one of my workbooks, I get very excited and do a little dance. So I like adding a sticker onto my calendar page for that. I like to add one for when I go to therapy. I like to add a sticker for, you know, when it's somebody's birthday, when we go on a crafting event, those kinds of things. So those aren't really the kinds of things that you'll be able to find in many sticker shops. And that's another reason why I like making my own stickers, because I can customize these to exactly what I want. Now, normally I'd make those on clear sticker paper, but I want to show you how I do it. So I'm going to be using this brain and heart icon as an example to show you. So I'm going to download this one and then upload it into Cricut Design Space. So once it's finished downloading, I'm going to save the PNG to my computer and then upload it to Cricut Design Space by clicking upload, upload image. And then you can either drag and drop the image there or you can search for it. So there's our image and we're going to click open. I'm going to click continue. I'm not going to change anything here because it's a PNG. We don't need to remove the background. If it was a JPEG that had like a white background, we would need to remove that because then Cricut Design Space will cut it. And if you want a little bit more of an in-depth tutorial, check out this one here as I'm not going to cover it in this video. So I'm going to click apply and continue. And because I want to print and cut with this, I'm going to click on flat graphic. It used to say print and cut image, but now they've changed the wording and now it says flat graphic. If I wanted to cut this out of vinyl, I would click single layer. And if I wanted to do multiple layers out of it, like a shadow box type thing, I would then click multiple layers, but that's a Cricut access only feature. So I'm going to leave it at flat graphic for now and click continue. I'm going to give it a name and I'm going to click upload and it'll automatically add it to my canvas, which you'll see now it'll pop up. There we go. And it is massive. So I'm going to change the size of it to fit into a teeny tiny little sticker. Now my stickers that I use for these are 0.5 because of the dot grid of the journal. So I'm going to change the size to 0.5 and you'll see it is teeny, teeny tiny. And I'm going to zoom right in. Now, again, we need to do the same thing as what we've done with the other one. So we need to add an offset, make it very small because we don't want the image to be too big. So let's go. Let's change this to 0.1 and click apply. Now, I don't like the fact that it joins up at the bottom. I think I might just use a regular old circle here. So I'm just going to delete that. I'm going to add in a shape and just make it a regular circle change that size to 0.6, change the color to white, and then I'm going to right click and send it to the back. So now we can see that the circle, it looks a little bit better. <laughs> and I'm going to select them both and make sure that the brain is kind of in the middle of the circle. So I'm going to click align and center. Now that looks much better. I could even make the circle a little bit bigger. Like the song says, make the circle bigger. <laughs> I'm going to realign it. And I feel like that gives me a little bit more wiggle room when it comes to these kinds of things. If the border is too close to the edge and your registration isn't perfect, it's going to look really funny. So I like to have just a little bit more leeway and working room. And I'm going to click flatten. And then from here, I'm going to do the same as what I did with the other stickers. So I'm going to right click duplicate and just line them up so that I have quite a few of them all in one go. Right click duplicate, right click duplicate. Now what I like to do is line them up because them being on different lines irritates me. So I'm going to click drag and select all of them, click align and then center vertically. So they're all on the same horizontal axis. I'm then going to go back to a line and distribute horizontally so that they're all evenly spaced from each other. And from here, I can just kind of duplicate them and create as many as I need. I like to make sure that I have for the entire year. So I'm going to make quite a few. 
And then I'll pretty much repeat that process for everything that I do, all of the little stickers, whether it's a little check mark, a yoga icon, a workout icon, any of those kinds of things, I'll do the same thing, exactly the same process. And I'll try and optimize the space as much as I can, but just for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna leave it just like that, <laughs> just to show you what I'm working with. So from here, I'm going to select everything. I'm going to right click and attach. Now this is kind of where you need to also plan out where your items are going to be on your page as when it comes to print and cut, there's only a certain size that you can actually use on the page. And this is exactly what I cover in my print and cut workbook. If so, if you are wanting to learn more about print and cut, then I wanna share a little bit about my workbook and how it can help you. This is a completely comprehensive workbook that shows you everything that you need to know to get started with print and cut. From exploring what print and cut is to exploring the different kind of materials that you can use for print and cut, size limitations, as well as a printable sizing guide that you can use as a reference every time you need to create something, the best printer to use and how to choose which one for you, how to calibrate your machine, setting up your print and cut stickers, using pattern fill, getting the right cut settings, and it also goes into die cut and kiss cut settings, and so, so, so much more, all for only $19. It is an 80 page workbook that covers so, so, so much when it comes to print and cut. I am very, very excited to help you get through your print and cut journey. I know that it'll help you so much with all of your print and cut problems, so I hope that you enjoy it, as much as so many of my amazing subscribers have already and the link is in the description. Thank you so much for listening and let's get back to the video. And I really hope that you enjoy that workbook because I put so much love and effort into it just to help you with whatever problems that you may have. But if you are having any other problems with your project, please leave a comment and I will do my best to see if I can help you sort it out. I also have templates like this on my Design Space profile that you can use. So I like to open this in a new window by clicking on the three dots in the top corner, clicking file and then new window. And then you can browse to the templates wherever they are. And I always use this one. So I'm going to copy that one, right click, copy. And then I go back to my project and I go right click, paste. And now I can know exactly where I need to place things. So I'm going to right click, send this to the back. And I can see that Everything that I want to put on my page will fit on this page. And if you wanted to make use of all of the space on the page, then you can absolutely do that. As you can see, there's a lot of extra space on the page that I can use. Obviously, I'm just showing you how to do this. So I'm not going to use this as a full page. And you can, you know, what I like to call Cricut Tetris and put everything on the page exactly where it needs to be and then that'll really help you out with using the most of your page. If you are using label paper it's only a few cents so you may not be as concerned but like with the clear printable sticker vinyl is pretty expensive so you might want to try and use the most out of your page that you absolutely can. So I'm going to hover over this layer and just click on the eye to hide it because we don't need to see it and we don't want to print it. I'm then going to click make and it'll ask me to save my project. So I'm definitely going to save it and I'm going to save it as journaling stickers. And then I'm going to click save. And once that's saved, it'll automatically take you to the next page where it's going to show you the layout and what your page is going to look like. It's going to give you a preview of your print and cut page. From here, I'm going to just click continue because I don't want to make any adjustments and I'm going to send it to printer. I'm going to leave bleed on. Most people tell you to switch it off. If you want a more robust explanation about bleed, check out this video here. But I leave it on pretty much always. And I use the system dialog to check the settings that I'm using. So I'm going to click print and it'll pop up a dialog. If you're using a Mac, it might be behind Cricut Design Space. So just keep that in mind. And then I always check the preferences. Now I am using label paper and I'm going to be printing the quality on high. The high speed is off and I'm going to click OK and then print and it will print out on my printer as soon as it goes through the network. There we go. She starts printing. My label paper is in. I just quickly did that. And then we have the cut settings section. 
Now the cut settings are something that you need to prep beforehand. So you need to cut like a small object. I like to use a star to see if it's cut through the top layer, but not the back layer, because when it cuts through the back layer, it makes life a little bit more difficult. And when it comes to label paper, I find that the washi sheet setting works very well. But again, please make sure that you've done your test cuts before you select the material and before you go and cut an entire page. Unless the material is not that expensive like the label paper and it may not really matter. But I find that I have to like take down notes about what cut setting I need to use for which paper because I use so many different types of sticker paper all the time that I don't always remember. And I'm busy working on a system for that, so there might be a video up there in the future. <laughs> but for now, we are done on Cricut Design Space's side, and now we literally just need to load it into the machine and cut it. We're using a matte paper, so we don't need to worry about registration and getting the registration wrong because of the glare. But if you are using a glossy paper, just keep in mind that the glossy paper is going to kick back a glare into the little sensor and you will actually need to use magic tape or a matte cellar tape to be able to stop that glare from happening. Because if it gives you a glare, that means your registration is going to be off, which means that your stickers are going to cut badly. So keep that in mind if you're wanting to use a glossy paper. Those are generally not my favorite ones. I know that you can use a white crayon. I haven't been able to find a white crayon or at least haven't brought myself to buy an entire pack of crayons just for the white one yet. So I will test that at some point, but I know that that is a hack that people use as well. And now that our page has printed, we can hop over to the Cricut and cut it out. I am going to be using my green standard grip mat because she doesn't have terribly much stick left but I'm going to place this in the top left hand corner making sure to align it as carefully as I can to both the top and the side borders I'm then going to use my brayer to make sure it gets stuck down onto the mat as well as we possibly can make sure that your ink is dry before you do this step especially if you're using clear vinyl as that tends to be the worst and tends to take the longest to dry. But now we need to load it up into our Cricut machine, click go, watch it register and cut all the way through the entire page, which may take a while, but I mean, it's really, really satisfying to watch it cut. Make sure you're keeping an eye on it while it's cutting as if any problems arise, you will be able to pause it and not waste the entire sheet of paper. Before you unload it, make sure to do a check on your cut settings to make sure that it's gone all the way through, which it has and beautifully, I might add. So then you are ready to unload, pack away, cricky. And when it comes to removing this from your mat, always flip your mat over and then peel the mat away from the page. If you do it the other way around, your page will curl. Your mat is fairly flexible, so it shouldn't suffer any damage if you do it properly. Put the mat protector back on and you will then have your page of stickers. Now you can very easily lift up your stickers and just look at how teeny tiny that sticker is. It is so small, but it'll fit perfectly in your journals because obviously our journals are small. <laughs> and these little stickers will be an easy reminder of when you have appointments and things like that. That's why I like to use the teeny tiny little ones. But if you want to explore some other print and cut tutorials and sticker ideas for your journals, for your life, for events that you might have, check out this playlist on the screen. Thank you so much for coming. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And remember, be kind to someone today. See you soon.